Nate. John. But wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No. <laughs> I'm Nate. Sorry, I just identified with you so much there that I, I wish I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John. Uh, We're reviewing La Confidential. It's LA, LA Confidential. Very plot heavy. Ooh, super plot thick. <laughs> it is plot thick. Los Angeles. That's it. Those are my three words for this. This film is a film about detectives that are bad, but also could be good. I think this movie is about how the lawlessness of the West is sort of like corruptible into the justice system. Like it stays there for a long time. It's about the law not always being just, I think. I think this movie could be clocked as a Western. That would be debatable, but... Okay, as long as we can agree, agree that you're incorrect, yeah. There's this, there are oh, these three okay. cops. You have the, the bad cop, the good cop, and the middle cop, right? So yeah. the bad cop is... Um, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. The middle cop is uh, Vincennes, Vincennes, and the good cop is Exley. And so, uh, Russell Crowe's character, Bud White, he's bad boy cop. Guy Pierce, aka Ed, Ed, Ed Exley. Exley, he is good boy cop who only plays by the rules and he doesn't take no nonsense of nothing. <laughs> and then, uh, Jack Vincent, middling cop, uh, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Uh, so Jack Vincent, he's like, I'm a cop that doesn't care anymore. You know what this movie is? It's L.A. Departed. And they're all working at the same precinct, and then these people get brought in that are, like, classified racially, and then a whole fight breaks out. And then actually, uh, all three of them are asked to testify against the police force, because um, they're all cops. And the bad cop denies it. The good cop... Uh, is like, yeah, I'll do, I'll do it right I'll, away. I'll testify. And makes, the middle cop... Deal. Yeah, yeah, the middle cop is pulled into it by the good cop. A murder happens at the Night Owl of multiple people. And the newly appointed good cop is like, I'm gonna go investigate because I'm a good boy. And then he gets there and there's like dragged bodies and there's a sh of them. <laughs> the, yeah, this plot is like The bad cop, um, Russell Crowe's character, Bud White, it has basically agreed to work with the captain of police. He's like, I'm gonna be your muscle and I'm gonna like do sketchy interrogation techniques to get information <clears throat> about um, a larger organized crime organization that is going to basically take over like all the heroin and like drug trafficking within Los Angeles. And then middling cop is like, I'm gonna be middling still. <laughs> and so those investigations happen for a while. Bud gets romantically involved with uh, Lou? Le Lane? Lena? I don't, Veronica Lake. She looks like a person that looks like Veronica Lake. I don't. So I'm just gonna call her Veronica Lake, even though. But that's the whole point. Is that she's not. Yeah, Veronica yeah. Her, Lake. No. Like his thing is that he like takes girls that kind of well, and guys that kind of look like celebrities, and then he like uh, puts them under the knife to make them more look like those celebrities, yeah. so that like you can be like, oh, I slept with Marilyn Monroe, yeah. but it's not Marilyn Monroe. But she hasn't been put under the knife. She's just got dyed her hair, and um, so Bud White falls in love with her. They find they find the the three guys who did the murder at the the coffee shop. Yep. Good cop ends up murdering them. Turns out they're not the actual bad guys. Convinces a uh, middling cop, yep. Kevin Spacey, mm -hmm. to work with him to find out what actually happened at that mm -hmm. murder scene. Uh, while bad cop. Is slowly becoming good cop because he's like, man, I wish I was a good cop. And then good cop is slowly becoming like middle cop because he has to do things he has to yeah, agree with. Yeah, because he has to do sketchy things. And then here is the plot twist: surprise, the whole LA police department is corrupt. Yeah, and Shocker. people die. Wow. Everyone dies except for good cop. Yeah. And then uh, middling cop, not middling cop, dies, and then bad cop becomes like middle of the road cop, can't speak yeah. anymore. You basically find out that Irish. Captain Cop. Is, <laughs> Irish Captain Cop. Irish Captain Cop that is sounds like not, a cereal. Is not oh, good. Sunny. Yeah, he, he's Lad, the bad guy. It's me, Alade. And he really loves heroin. And instead of arresting him, he gets shot in the back. And then good cop comes full circle, bad cop comes full, full circle. And it's, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Yep. 
right. complex plot. That was ridiculous. Yeah. It's it was my favorite thing, and it was my least favorite thing. Was that like every like time after Exley did like the first mass execution of those dudes, where he killed like six people. After that, he would like do something, and he would go straight Horatio Kane, and he'd be like, "Looks like they jumped off a cliff." And it was like, dog. Like, I can only think of the Law and Order jingle, but yes. Yeah. It's the, 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 the who is the. I'll say my least favorite is when Buddy, or not Buddy, Bud White first like has a genuine social interaction with Veronica Lake because yeah. I, her last name starts with a B, but I don't know. What Veronica. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they keep. Cutting from medium shots to like <laughs> them moving around the room, then back to medium shots, and I'm just like, why not just stay in one place and like do this conversation in one place? Can we talk about how Exley cucked Bud? Is Vincennes has like um, figured out a decent portion of the plot, right? So he goes to the uh, captain's house, Dudley Smith. Dudley Smith, such such a like American name, but like such a bad Irish accent. Um, so he's like, oh, here are these facts that I figured out. Relaxes in, <laughs> in the chair. And then Dudley's like, oh. He has his back to him. He's like, oh, did you speak to Exley about this? And he's like, no. And he's like, what, pop? Pops him with a 30 cal. 32 cal, actually, right in the chest. 30 cal is in the thing. Well, it is, but, huh? It's 32 special. And it, I thought that was just like a cool scene where it was like, that's a situation where it's like you kind of know what's going on and that solidifies it for you and like you like right as the cop turns his or the the captain turns his back like you know he's gonna kill him and you're like oh shit. And like you're worried for vincennes but like vincennes doesn't figure it out in time because there's like this the through line that he's like not good at doing good things now he's doing something good and then he dies for it he's, a, anyway. he's italian man but it's like not a holy anyway. the good cop excellent excellent um he is given the task of interrogating the three suspects for the murder at the night owl because it is it's like showing his actual like prowess as like a detective on how to get confessions like he he knows mm -hmm. how to probe a person to like get them to confess something like when he gets like a confession out of one person, he's like basically making the other person think that they're squealing on them. Yeah. And he's playing them off of each other so brilliantly that like I'm upset when Bud White comes in at the end and like ruins this beautiful confession that was going on. Like yeah. he, he could have gotten it without Bud White and then Bud White comes in and like ruins it. Like, well, and then you, you can tell that he figured out that something else is going on that isn't yeah. the crime at the night out. Like... If Bud wouldn't have come in, he might have been able to get farther, even though I think yeah. that probably Dudley would have stepped in or done something. My favorite scene? Is that water? No. I'm going to give this movie 9.5 pounds of heroin out of 10. Ooh, that's uh, a lot of heroin. How much money is that? It is a lot of heroin. It's a money. The acting is amazing. I think that the plot is, like, coherent. And there are no, like there are very few, like, unreasonable things that happen. Like it, it all makes sense as to why it's happening. I think that the cinematography is great. I think the score is great. It's the best neo noir film since Chinatown. Seven out of ten, thirty two rounds. And the reason I give it seven out of ten is because like I feel almost the opposite of you do. Like I feel like. The plot went on for like a very long time, and I like didn't need all of it. Like, like a noir is about the slow moments. Like that's the thing is it is it doesn't pick. It's not like very straightforward cop drama or like expanded upon like make you think. It's like we're gonna cut all these shots and go all these places, and make you do all these things, and like try to like give you red herrings and go this way and that way rather than like one or the other. And that was my problem with it is like it's very like chopped up. It's very difficult to grasp who is what and what their connections are, and by the time you figure that all that out and get it, because you're focused on that, you've like missed a bunch of plot elements that are happening. Anything that goes over like a hundred minutes already is a hard sell for a lot of people to like pay attention for that long. I, I feel like that's a criticism of today's society rather than the film of a time in the I mean, not 90s? particularly, like, 97. 97. Yeah. Not even particularly, because, like, movies that go shorter sell better. Like, always, throughout time. 
but like I'm just saying like my critique of the movie is that like there's there's too many characters and too much going on for the exposition to like make sense. I don't think there are that many characters. I think it's a uh, good amount of characters. You can't remember all the names. One, I'm drunk. Two, uh, I've only seen this movie twice. Like, I feel like Vincent's character could be cut out completely and there would be like no problems with this film. Mm. I mean, maybe. I feel like his plot development with the district attorney is important. Yep. Unlike, I'm just kidding. I don't have any, I don't have any good bits. Like, comment. I'm very drunk at this uh, point. No. <laughs> I slammed that like there was a lot in there. It was like half a sip. If you want to see more of the things that I've done in my uh, opinions, Ooh. click there. If you want to see more of me, click inside this tiny glass. It's going to be bigger than that. Make it small. I can't. Make it big. And you're going to click it and you're going to like it. Uh, mm. Mm. Grozy Productions, that's us. Like and subscribe. Nate and Preston do Super 8 films. It's going to be like over there. Click on that.